shot. And they score! The Fighting Irish fight on as they advance to the regional final. For the second year in a row, a goal in sudden death overtime in the NCAA tournament put an end to North Dakota hockey's national championship dreams. You don't prepare for it. It's not like it's something where like I'm prepared to, you know, maybe lose this game and like be fine or whatever. Like you always expect to win and keep going. But while this season finished in similar fashion to last year, UND's journey in 2022 couldn't have been more different than the path taken in the previous campaign. The season prior, North Dakota entered the year as the nation's top-ranked team, and they lived up to that billing, dominating opponents en route to a 22-6-1 record a second straight NCHC regular season title, a conference tournament championship, and a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. What usually happens when you have really, really good teams like that, a lot of those guys are going to the NHL, and, and they did. Essentially, you wiped out almost your top two lines, your top D pairing, uh, your goalies, and it's uh, as big of a rebuilding project as I've seen in the last 17 years. A year ago today, when it was this week, it was really even more strange because you're like, wow, like, I don't know what this group's going to look like next year. In total, 10 players who had been part of the 2021 team signed pro contracts, while three others transferred to other programs, leaving Bradbury and his staff the tall task of replacing half the roster in one off season. But instead of bringing in 13 or 14 freshmen, double the usual amount, the team added nine first-year players and also utilized the transfer portal to sign five others with extensive college hockey experience. You're hearing, oh, who's this Connor Ford guy? Like, he's really good on the face-off circle. Like, I heard he's coming in. You just get out your phone and you're like looking at his elite prospects. You're like, what, what's this guy all about? With 14 newcomers and just 13 returners, there were question marks over what this team would look like once the season began in October. There's obviously some doubt around just our fan base, around the league, um, how we were going to be. I thought they had a chance to be pretty good by the end of the season. I thought at the start of the season there were going to be a lot of bumps because you just can't lose that many guys and guys of that caliber and keep going. It just doesn't happen. But for this year's North Dakota team, it did happen. The New Look squad came out of the gates strong, winning eight of their first 10 league games to lead the NCHC at the holiday break. I think right from the start of the season, um, we kind of knew like, yeah, this group's special, like we can, we can do something here. The team seemed to gel a little bit more than expected right away. Just some of the ways our guys were close to each other, with guys not knowing each other coming in here and, and how they reacted to each other, I think you get a kind of an instant uh, notification in your mind on, on what that looks like and I thought our guys did a really good job and, and I, I go back to our leadership starting with Mark Sendon and Ethan Frisch and Sanderson and, and Gavin Hain and those guys they did an outstanding job of bringing this group together. The second half of the season wasn't all smooth sailing. UND lost a different key player to injury or international duty almost every weekend but despite all those hardships the team continued to succeed no matter who was in the lineup. They just found ways to win every night. Different guys were contributing. It was, you went to the rink not knowing you know, who was going to score the game-winning goal that night. Whoever was in our lineup came in and did their job and, and did it very well to, to, to win games. So the standard was a standard, and the guys kept to those high standards. Against all odds, North Dakota would go 9-1-1 down the stretch against some of the best teams in college hockey. And on the final Friday of the regular season, in overtime in Omaha, they would clinch a share of a third consecutive Penrose Cup as league champions. Actually listening to the Cup in Omaha, I think it was one of the most proud moments I had and I wasn't even on the ice. Watching our team with that next man up mentality, I mean, it was just absolutely incredible and so happy for our group and so proud of what we've done. This is the most unexpected Penrose I've seen them win. When you lose that many guys in a league that had so much coming back to it, it almost felt like when they were in first place throughout, you were kind of waiting for them to fall back to where we expected them to, which is maybe in the third and fourth range. And they just kept going and going, and they had more adversity, and as they had more adversity, they kept rising. In the end, North Dakota would finish a few victories shy of the ultimate goal in 2022. But to quote Brad Berry, one game doesn't define a season. What does define this group is their character their passion for the game, and their drive to play for each other and for the program, something this team has in common with the version that came before and all those who will wear green and white to follow. You look around, so many banners up here, so many things around, 
and you just want to add to that and that drive from everyone and the leadership uh, kind of explaining that to the new guys kind of gets everyone on the same page right away from the summer. If we're on the same page all working towards one goal as a unit, great things can happen. And joined now by Alex Heinert. First of all, how high is the bar for this program? It is way up there every year, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, every expectations are always sky high. Even when the team doesn't bring back a lot of talent from the year before, they just reload. I mean, this is a program that doesn't rebuild. They gear up for a national title every season. That's what makes it so much fun to cover. So from what they have built this just this past season, are they a little bit ahead? going into next season. You would think so. Based on what we saw this team accomplish shorthanded and with all these new guys this last year, they're going to bring back the vast majority of this team for the 2022-23 campaign. They'll be picked to probably win the NCHC again for a fourth straight time. Yeah. And you know, maybe this could be the year they may end up marching on and win their ninth national championship. And even though they came up short, so to speak, this year, you think they overachieved a little bit, huh? Well, I think so. I mean, I th expectations are always sky high, like we right. said. But there also is some reality when you turn over half your roster and you lose all those guys to the NHL. They play in the toughest conference in college hockey against all these loaded teams. And this year especially, all of these teams brought back everybody from teams that were Frozen Four teams a season ago. And North Dakota had a better regular season than all of them. It was, it was impressive what this group did last year. And yes, we're excited to see what they do next year. Yeah, excitement level is always as high always as the bar high. for yeah, this absolutely. program, right? All right, thanks a lot, Alex Heiner. This has been Midco Sports Magazine presented by Build Your Base with Beef Sports Nutrition and Training Program.